Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is AP Physics Essentials video 34. It's on the magnetic domains. In this picture right here, my daughter and I are both playing with ferrofluids, which are tiny little liquid magnets that can respond to a magnetic field. And so in this video what I'm doing is I'm taking a magnet, holding it underneath the ferrofluid, and you can start to kind of visualize these magnetic fields. I can then turn it sideways and you can even see the north and the south pole. And so these tiny little ferrofluids are made, made up of these hundred angstrom little magnetic domains, which are tiny magnets within the magnet itself. And so if you have ferromagnetic material in the form of a magnet, what you're going to get is a north pole and a south pole. Again, you'll never have just a north pole by itself or a south pole by itself, but if we were to look inside that ferromagnetic material, we would find that there are these magnetic domains, which you can think of as tiny little magnets, and each of those tiny magnets have their own tiny little fields. And so if you break a magnet in half, have you broken it? No, you've just created two magnets. And you could keep breaking it in half over and over and over until you get to the level of these tiny magnetic domains. And if these line up, if they align, then we've got an overall magnetic, ferromagnetic material. And they can do this by putting them inside an external field, or sometimes it'll just spontaneously or naturally occur. And so if we have a bar magnet, it's got a clear north and a south, we can make sure that it's magnetized by holding a compass up on either side. And you'll find that the south end of the needle points to the north end of the magnet and vice versa down here. Now if we break it in half, that bar magnet in half, what have we done? Well, let's use our compasses again. If we put them on either side, what you'll find is that we've now created a south pole at this side, and then we've created a north pole up here. So we could do this again and again and again, and we just keep making smaller and smaller magnets. So there must be magnets within the magnets that are causing that magnetism. And so you can think of it like this. In a block of iron, We've got all of these domains, which are going to be tiny magnets inside it. But if the whole thing isn't magnetized, they're going to be pointing in every rich direction, and they're going to be separated by these domain walls. And so if you take something that's not magnetized, and you magnetize it, what you're really doing is you're lining up all those magnetic domains. If they're all pointed in the same direction, then you've magnetized that overall object. And so a question that might jump to mind is, why do we even have magnetic domains? What's the purpose of having these tiny magnets within magnets? Well, it's an energy kind of question. So if we look at a magnet right here, it's creating these giant um, uh, magnetic fields around the outside of it. And so what it's doing is using magnetostatic energy is what scientists refer to it. And so if we can start breaking that down into smaller magnets, what we're doing is we're reducing the amount of that magnetic field and we're reducing the amount of energy. And so if we get a bunch of these domains, we've actually eliminated that overall uh, increase in energy. It's at a lower energy state. So let's say I want to go back again. Well, let's say I want to go from an object that doesn't have a charge to one that does. Well, this occurs in nature. Lodestone, scientists and, and, and humans have known this for hundreds of years, are naturally magnetized pieces of magnetite. And so um, how does that work? Well, there's speculation that it could be that they're being formed, um, since we mostly find them on the surface of the earth, near a lightning strike. But what it's doing is it's lining up these domains. If you want to do this in the laboratory, what you do is you take a chunk of some ferromagnetic material, like iron for example, and we put it inside an electric field. So we're going to put it inside a magnet. And you can see at this point that we've got all these domains. Again, they're much smaller than this, but we have all these domains and they're pointing in every which direction. But if we can apply a magnetic field to it, watch carefully right here what happens if we let it sit there for a while is that we're going to start to eliminate a lot of those domain walls. We're going to start to eliminate a lot of those domains. And so overall, this now is going to have a magnetic field. It's going to be a magnet. Uh, it, it, it may last for a certain amount of time before it eventually, those domains go back to where they were before. And so do you understand how these magnetic domains lead qualitatively to the overall behavior of the magnet? I hope so, and I hope that was helpful.